Okay. So, uh, today we're going to look into how to build your own CSS uh, framework. So I know that there are a couple of, of uh, approaches you can take, right? So either you can take one of those uh, frameworks that, that are quite popular, uh, something like Bootstrap uh, or something a little bit more um, custom like, like Tailwind CSS. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff out there, right? So what I want to do today, though, is um, kind of like use something called uh, Gaudiamos to kind of like uh, start the process of building your own CSS, right? So uh, what I did is like you go to, to Gaudiamo Starter and um, so uh, this is linked here too in the, uh, I'm gonna share those links in, in the um, description. And then you go over uh, to Gaudiamo Starter, use this as a template um, to get your own uh, version of it. So that just creates a fork, right? And um, basically I already did that, uh, check that out. So uh, this is what you kind of get, right? So the first thing I look at is kind of like the package JSON. Um, so this is a parcel build. So here's how this works, right? So you're supposed to kind of like, okay, this doesn't have a name. And, okay, interesting. Um, kind of use this starter pack to build your own CSS. And uh, we're going to do just that. So the first thing I'm going to try is to simply run this and see what's going on on uh, let's make this a little bit smaller here uh, boom okay so that looks pretty much okay this is using HTML5 boilerplate and then here we have a couple of um, uh, okay so let's just follow th those instructions right so I find the index CSS my virus and composition CSS okay so the SCSS folder is apparently everything that we need. I mean, but apparently I know that. Um, so let's have a look at that. So there is a main CSS. Oh, actually it starts here and normalized CSS. So the main CSS, I'm just guessing, comes from, yeah. So that's the HTML5 boilerplate stuff. So I'm going to oh, let's close all of those. I don't know what happened here. Uh, go back to the index. Uh, let's start by commenting that out. And in order to play around with a couple of things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file uh, that I'm going to call test. Uh, not now. Uh, and then the only thing I want to do is let me actually see how this parcel do you just include the yeah that one right? Okay. So this is the only line we need here. Uh, and then we are uh, probably going to the package JSON and say, hey, uh, don't do that, build the test. Okay, so this is running. So I should basically in a second see, ooh, nothing. Okay, that's kind of weird. So apparently I can't change the entry point while it's running. So let's stop that process and run it again. All right. So now I've got my empty test file. Fair enough. So uh, let's maybe start with the following, right? So let's go through the index and kind of like see what's going on here. So the first thing that I have is the custom variables. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's do that and basically say uh, my bars. What do we have here? So this is based on Gaudiamus 1, 2, and here we see a couple of things, right? So let's walk through section by section. So here I have a grid container prefix. I've got columns. I've got items. I've got a breakpoint map. So in our test, uh, let's start by actually let me quickly so we can see something. Um, create a style with uh, color me that has a background of yeah sure that'll do okay uh, and then here is the interesting part so I'm going to say grid 12 uh, and then I guess color me 
So as you can see, right, I have this um, uh, background here, right, that I, I mean, just, you know, basically put here to kind of see what's going on. So this generates a container that has grid 12. So the way that works, right, is that I say like, okay, there's a grid template. So the big difference between something that is based on, um, let's say Flexbox or whatever, is that I now define my grid system on the parent. So here, rather than on uh, the children. So if I were to say, hey, I wanna have two of those, right? Then that would now break out into um, two rows. But if I, for example, said, well, so it's a 12 grid system for now. So if it's grid six, six, meaning like, okay, so this six is 50% out of 12, right? So now they're next to each other, do you see that? Um, so here I can see, okay, columns, that is 12. That's why items, that's the depth of, uh, you know, how many, how many items I can have in a row. Um, and the breakpoint map is uh, MD and LG. So what this does is something that we should probably look at. So let's just say we change that back to 12 and then said, okay, MD grid six, six then we would have it like this. Um, but as soon as we hit the breakpoint, it is uh, next to each other, right? So in, in one row. So the first thing that I wa wanna try out is to basically say, okay, let's change some variables here. So I kind of am confused about this uh, container prefix. So I wanna call it row, right? So if I call this row, as you can see now, now it stopped breaking, see that? It's not breaking anymore. Why? Well, because now this is not called grid anymore. This is called row. Same here. This is now called row. Okay. So, and you can see now it actually works again. And uh, the column, well, actually 12 is fine. And so, yeah, I mean, that is fine. I could add breakpoints if I wanted to. So those are kind of values that you kind of have to see what makes sense for you. So um, as you can see, so it's, it's a mobile first approach, right? So this is the general one. And then starting from that break point, I want it to behave like that. Um, and then of course I could, in that case, do what else do we have an LG, right? And say, okay, so LG might be uh, row, uh, what could that be? Um, four, 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 right? And then, I would have to maximize this in order to actually see this, right? So um, now I have a third, right? Which, uh, so now the last third is missing, right? Which is fine. Um, and okay, so, so far so good. So what's the stuff about grit that we don't see here because I can't uh, influence it in this version is, um, oh, actually let's, let's not even worry about this for now. Uh, let's go to spacing and utility generator, right? Um, so I have a uh, base spacing, so that, that would be the 20 pixels, uh, a spacing unit, which is uh, REM, spacing step, which is five, and spacing unit, which is five. And then you have all those maps that would kind of like go through a couple of things. So, and actually just so for that to make sense, let's look at it like this. So I have, uh, M is margin, P is padding, then I have top, bottom, right, left, X, uh, that's the X axis, yeah, that's left and right, and Y, that is top and bottom, okay? So uh, position map, well, let's not worry about this for now. So just the first two. So how does this work? Well, so this generates utility based on um, those variables that I have. So meaning that if I have a M for margin, and then a T for top, right? And then I have uh, f up to five spacing units that will go with this spacing step and this unit, then basically what I would have here, let's just say, I say, okay, margin, top, five, right? Then, oh, this does not seem to have effect. Yeah, it does, okay. Then what I have here, is uh, a margin of 1.25 REM at the top, see that? 
So why is that? Well, pretty, pretty logical, right? So five times um, 0.25 is 1.25 and then REM, right? So let's just assume that I'm going to do that differently. And here I would say, uh, you know what, this is five and this is pixel. Um, so what I would have then, boom, is uh, 25 pixel, right? Margin top because so five times five is 25 pixel is the unit. So now I have my uh, class uh, MT5 would go to um, uh, what's it called? Um, 25 pixel, right? So note how when I do six here, it should not be available anymore, right? So as you can see, nothing happens. Uh, and that is because I only have uh, five spacing units. So don't forget that, that the generation will take longer the more, more uh, iterations of stuff you do. But let's just say I wanna have six spacing units and as you can see now it works. So now I've got a 30, right? So margin top 30 because six times five would be 30 and then this is my, um, the way of, of uh, getting that basically in. Uh, let's change this back. Um, just so we have the default for, for going forward, right? Now a position map um, that is uh, as, as simple as you would think. So those are the positions that you can kind of like assign to something. So let's just say I would have another thing here where I say uh, color me and oh, and absolute. And now I say position absolute. Um, then, I mean, okay, it has no effect yet, right? Because there's no, actually I need the body to have a position relative, I guess. Oh, does that not apply? Uh, yeah, th this position is absolute. Yeah, but I have a, Okay, so in order to actually overflow this, let's say I have an MT of uh, zero. Does zero not exist? No, probably not. Okay, no one. Why does this go in above the grid? That doesn't matter, right? Um, but you get the idea. So uh, this is then how, oops, oh, because I'm on the wrong element. Right, this is then how, how uh, the, the positioning works. Um, and uh, I can have that fixed and all kinds of things, right? So height width unit map and height width value map. What does that do? So I can change that and uh, so let's look at that first, right? So I could say that this absolute, for example, right? Uh, has a particular, um, what is it called? So width, height, okay. So I could, for example, say, okay, this has a width of, what is that, uh, 50, what is HP? 50P, right? So I take 50P, uh, that would be the percentage. Um, so 50%, right? So if I look at that, I can basically see, yep, it has a 50% width now. Now, if I want to have like like different kind of values, let's let's just say like, hey, you know what? Uh, let me say, uh, I want to have p x, right? And p x is uh, is p x, right? Let's do the super strange. And then I would were to say, hey, you know what? This is not fifty p. This is fifty p x, right? So what I would have, as soon as this is done building right, is, and here you can see it nicely, again, right, is that we now have 50 pixel, right, because I just generated this uh, utility here. And of course, you could say, hey, uh, this is, you know, like, also has like something like, I don't know, 400, right, and then say, hey, this is actually 400 pixel, oops, no, 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 this one, right, so this will go. Um, so let's combine it and say like, hey, you know what? The height is 400 pixel and the width is 100%, right? And then you can basically see how it's gonna, gonna 
uh, React. So uh, I didn't give the body a height of, of 100. That's why uh, you know it's not taking up the full space, but it doesn't matter. You see, you see the principle here. Uh, the height is 400 pixel. Uh, uh, sorry, the height is shouldn't be. Width is 100 percent. Height is 400 pixels, so that's absolute. So um, I can basically generate um, these kind of things if I wanted to, and you know, add whatever I I want. Same with this. Same with this. Right? I mean, I, you can be completely creative here. Now, colors. Uh, I, I guess that's the easiest one to kind of like imagine, right? So um, well, let's maybe have something else and say, hey, I have a main color and the main color is, uh, let's actually see what we have here. Uh, let's say that's really strong pink, huh? Really strong pink or that kind of like, ooh, that's super aggressive. Yeah, let's do that one. Let's do that one. And um, so what does that do? That by itself, nothing, by the way, right? Uh, we have to provide this to the color map, right? So let's just say that, hey, you know what? My primary is not primary color anymore. It's main. Or actually, let's call, create a new one that we call main. 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 OK. Now the color class map is the kind of coloring I can apply to certain things. So let's, for example, look at the BG, right? Which is the background color. Uh, and now do the following. Let's get rid of this. I don't need any kind of stuff like that anymore. Uh, and instead of color me, we're now going to say, hey, let's do BG main. See that? And then I have the background of uh, our aggressive pink here. Um, there are a couple of other things here. So text uh, and, and border color. Again, you can, you know, create maps however you want to. So that's just the standard kind of like uh, default values that are given if you load Gaudiamus via the CDN. But feel free to do uh, whatever you want. Um, so let's do uh, what else? Okay, let's maybe work with the state, right? So. Okay, so let's just say this is BG main, but on hover, let's be BG, uh, yeah, transparent, why not? Right, so if I hover this, boom, see that? And this is like a little bit the format you, you might know from Tailwind, right? It's just e easier to implement and I can basically now create um, like whatever whatever state I want, or let's say uh, the text. So, so actually I'm gonna do that one, right? And say, hey, uh, on hover, do the opposite and then say text uh, main, right? So now, do you see that from the background? It changes to um, the uh, font that has that. Um, so, so far so good. I mean, you can see the, the uh, declaring the colors here is just so, so, I mean, you could probably declare them directly here, right? Yeah, you can. It's just that there are a couple of things like transparent that you kind of don't want to uh, declare, right? But that's basically it. Um, hover active, you know, I mean that that makes more sense than uh, for like input fields and so on. Uh, shading and border, so we have a depth of three and a spread of four. Uh, let's see what that means in combination. Um, so what you can do, and maybe we should, just so we can see that a little bit better in the body, what I would like to have, let's get rid of this one. And maybe let's get rid of this one. And then here, let's create a container. Now this is part of Gaudiamus already, right? So there are a couple of those glasses that are kind of like, uh, it's hard to see, but I mean, it's kind of like placing that in the container. Um, that adheres to, to kind of like a minimal spacing. And what I also want to do, since we have that now already, is uh, I want to have a mountain top of five, right? Just to give it a little bit of a uh, spacing to the top. Um, okay, so far so good. Now the, yeah, shading and borders, right. Uh, so maybe instead of our background main and all those hover things, let's not do that for now. Let's not even worry about our MT and let's not worry about our color me. 
right? So what I want to do instead is uh, create something like a border of one, right? So as you can see, there's a border now. Uh, I want to have a little bit of padding. Uh, let's say a padding X two and a padding Y of one. Yeah, that'll do. Um, and what I can do, and actually it's just so the other here doesn't, let's also do a margin two here, I guess, right? So we have a little bit of space. Um, what I want to do is to kind of like, um, well, influence the border, right? So what, let me see what we have here, depth, and okay. So let's just say I want to give the border, so there should be till three, right? That's basically the point. Nope, that is not how the depth works. Right. What is it, till two then, one less? Okay, because zero, one, yeah, exactly, okay. Yep, right. So it starts from zero, right? So I can have a border zero, which basically means if the depth is three, so if I want this to work, uh, what I would have to do is here say four. Right, wait until it's building, boom. See, and now I have uh, a border uh, accordingly. So, um, but I, I can of course just say like, hey, how about a, a uh, border bottom of three, right? So now I only have the border at the bottom. And what I can also do uh, let's actually leave this and then say be rounded. Okay, and then as you can see, uh, it's not a hard uh, edge anymore. It's it's rounded, right? Which makes sense for like buttons and stuff like that. Um, but how do we influence that kind of behavior, right? So so first of all, what what does what does spread mean, right? So so that is something that we can kind of like see when we look into. Uh, uh, drop shadow. So let's just say here, I want to say, um, and how's that called again? Raised, raise one. Okay. So raise one main, let's say that's what we want, right? So now you can see a drop shadow in the main color. And um, it has um, the the uh, so one so this should basically have a spread of what did we say four pixel yeah a four pixel and here you can see how that goes right so this is the spread um, since it is one uh, we have point uh, zero two five rem point I don't even know how that's calculated right but that seems to be based on our uh, units and then four pixels to spread so this is basically how how the blur works. So if I were to say, uh, let's try that out with a state. Oops. So only do that on hover. Yeah, that works fine. Right? Do you see how this kind of reacts now in this? It's I mean super ugly, but it's to, about proving a point here, right? Um, okay. So that's how that works. Um, and before we get to typography, actually what I forgot, right, uh, is kind of like on the grid level, what we kind of want to understand is that I can place things. So let's just say this now takes up the spread on the X axis, right? But let's just say I want to have it at the start, at the center or the end of that grid. Then what I can do is I can say, uh, well, for example, place X end, at which point it would be at the end of, uh, you know, this, this uh, grid uh, column. I can place it, of course, in the center, right? As you can see here in the suggestions, like again, that works with different breakpoints and so on. Um, uh, and I can do that on two axes, so on the X axis and on the Y axis. Uh, I don't think I would see a difference here, but in theory, um, that, you know, like now would be, I mean, this is just as high as it is, right? But let's just say you would have a bigger container. Uh, we could do this and say height, um, what did we say, 400 pixel? Uh, let's do it like this. We erased that, didn't we? 
Nope, this should actually work. So the container is, oh, it's because it's on the wrong, wrong element. Our grid has a height of 400 pixel. Okay. See, and now you can basically see it nicer where you say, okay, uh, now it's placed in the center of the uh, grid column. See that? Uh, and that's exactly uh, how it behaves in that instance. So, um, right, so here would be our 400 somewhere. Uh, just so I don't forget this. Um, okay, so let's go back to our uh, typography is the kind of like the last topic. So you can do, so this is decorations, this is map and this is font size. Um, mm, let's maybe start with something pretty simple and make an H1 uh, with what we say headline, right? Okay. Mm, where does this color come from? Oh, from compositions. Okay. Uh, we'll have to look into that in a second. Um, actually, let's clear that for now. Just so we don't have that stuff. So that's for the demo, right? Um, okay. I don't want to have any anything to convolute what we're doing here. Um, so now let's basically say, okay, let's say this is text main font LG. Ooh, an LG is actually kind of small. Uh, let me see how that's calculated. LG is what? Is seven, okay. So here you can basically set that, right? So seven times the spacing unit, M, yeah, like the spacing unit, so seven times 0.25, um, right? So, and REM, and that's, yeah, that's what we see, right? So we have a 1.75 REM font size. Uh, let's maybe for now ignore that. So I can, again, set that however I want to. I can either change it uh, here, um, but in my case now, I'm just gonna go for XL because it's an H1, right? So uh, probably should be that, XL. All right, so let's just say that's our headline. Let's see, actually, let's go, let's go crazy. Let's see what's happening here, okay? That would be what, 12, right? So that's our H1 size now, okay? Um, and then what else do we have? Yeah, we can, we can have decorations, right? So, okay, so text decoration underline, sure, let's do that. So as you can see, it's just like, okay, what, what decorations are we gonna go underline and none, uh, wait, uh, so that should probably be a text, wait, oh no, that's font, font, uh, what do we have? Sorry, what do we have here? Weight map, light and strong, okay. Right, so now, well, this doesn't really do anything. Let's see if this works. Uh, where is it strong? Yeah, font weight, weight 700. Okay, uh, let's set that to 900. Let's build it. Boom, okay. I guess this font doesn't really do anything here, right? Let's try the, the light and see if that makes a difference. Font light, yeah, that makes a difference. Okay, so this font doesn't really seem to uh, I'm not actually sure what, what font is even loaded. Probably none. Um, okay. Right, probably the bold is, is the H1 browser behavior. Um, so let's say like this, and actually I of course hate the underline. I just want to show you how that works, All right? Okay. So let's now get into the real business though, right? So at this point, uh, we just kind of played around with a couple of variables. Right, and basically said, okay, so uh, those are the kind of like variables that, that uh, can be set in order to do our thing. So let's now get into actual designing our own, uh, well, um, 
framework. So after after we're happy with with uh, setting the variables accordingly, right? So in order to do that, let's let's pretend a couple of things here, right? So I'm going to say what we're going to start designing a form, right? And the form will have a grid. I'm oh, sorry, we called that row of six six uh, with I don't know yet what that will have, but I guess it's going to be a an input type text. Yep, that's fine. Name is username. Or actually, let's do that with a label. ID is username. Um, and there's a label for username. I say username. And then I don't know. I'm going to say email. Um, Right. Yep. That's about how I want this to look like. And then after that, maybe after the whole row thing, even uh, I want to have a button with type submit. And then I don't know, let's say login, right? Okay. So far, so good. Now, Let's look at a couple of things here of how we start designing this. Uh, so the first thing that I'm interested in is kind of like, okay, how will our input forms look like? So let's start with utilities maybe and say, all right, so let's give this oops, a class, right? And say, um, this should first of all be 100% of the width, okay? Um, then this whole thing should probably have a little bit of padding, I suppose, right? Yeah, let's give this a little bit of padding. But the first thing that we're going to do is to say, no, we want to have a border bottom one. Let's see how that behaves. Oh, so no, generally a border zero and then a border bottom one. Okay. Now it's at the bottom. Yeah, let me just quickly get a little bit of space in here. Uh, so this is a little bit out of the way here for now. Okay. Uh, so this looks a little bit close. So I'm probably going to have a margin top two. Get the label out of the way here a little bit. Okay. And now let's assume that I want to have this in our main color, right? So I'm going to say border main. All right. Yeah, so far so good. I hate that this username is coming up. I'm actually going to call this differently. Uh, I'm going to say any, uh, any for now, right? Yeah. All right. So still not super happy with it. So the first thing I want to kind of indicate the active state, I guess, right? So let's just say uh, here after the border bottom, I know border main, I'm going to say hover uh, border accent. Yeah. Oops. It's not hover. Uh, it's what is it focus? course it's focus yep it's better okay let's say like this maybe and okay so a couple of other things that I'm bothered with is that I probably want to say hey uh, I want to have a Padding bottom of two. Let's see how that looks like. Yeah, I like that better. Now yeah, it's maybe a little much. Okay. And then let's do a font uh, default. Uh, does this work? Font default, does this even kick in? 
font size is one rem. Okay, but it's probably already the standard, right? Uh, then let's do font md. Yeah, a little bit bigger here. Yeah, so this is something that, uh, no, where's my font md? You see down here, right, that would be five times the spacing unit. So, I mean, you can basically, depending on what you did here, this might be uh, completely different for you, but just so you understand what's going on here in my thought experiment. And yeah, I guess that is kind of how I want it to behave. Okay, fine. Oh, and you know what I also want now that I see it, I wanna have a background transparent, even though I think this is kind of like a Chromium thing here, but I wanna say BG uh, transparent so that, that stuff is gone when I choose this. Now, why is this, why is this, is that an, strange behavior here, isn't it? Is that because it's auto-filled? Yeah, well, let's not worry about that for now. Um, and then the username, uh, so sorry, and then the label. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I wanna place the label, but uh, let's for now assume, hey, uh, I wanna have text gray. Oh, I can do it like this, active focus. What is, what is this gonna do for me in the label? Ah, okay, so does this inherit the focus? No. Uh. Just, oh, and I hate the gray. That's the gray. Uh, that shouldn't be that way. Yeah, nope. Uh, let's give this something a little bit stronger here. Yeah. I guess that's more how I like it. Yeah, okay. So let's assume that's what we wanna do, right? Now, and, and now we come to the comp composition logic, right? To say like, okay, so how does this actually work? Um, so of course you don't wanna write this every time, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and say, hey, I'm gonna create a composition class, right? That I'm gonna call text input. And then I basically simply say extend and, co oops, and copy all of this over. Uh, and so those are classes, right? So we wanna extend those classes, uh, same here. Uh, and actually, you know what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace space with uh, comma space dot. Okay, well, I probably shouldn't have done that, I guess. Uh, but okay, I guess. Uh, should have done that in selection. Yeah, okay, close that. Uh, it still saved me some time, I guess. Overall, okay. So this does not work, right? So we can't, if, if we're extending something, uh, everything that you find with uh, a, a colon does, does not work. So we actually have to do that step manual and say, okay, text input uh, focus, and then we say again, okay, at extend, and then we say uh, b accent, right? Or, oops, nope. Um, oh yeah, right, we could do that, right? But it wouldn't kick in, would it? No, we don't want to attach that class. Actually, let me see if that even works. So in our test, let's go to uh, I guess the other one and say the input has a class ugh, why does this happen uh, class of text input 
uh, which now that I think of it is a very stupid name for this. Uh, I'm going to call this input text. Oop, and there's a problem here. Oh, yeah. Okay, now let's see how it behaves, if that actually works on, yeah, it does work. Okay, so I don't even need to do that, see that? Um, okay, so apparently you can simply escape this and then it works just fine, uh, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool, I hope that is browser um, uh, compatible with, with all the browsers. So that means that we can get rid of this stuff here completely, right? and can simply say okay input text and we should then basically have yeah the exact same behavior so now going forward i can do this whenever i want to and just use the class input text so that's basically the first thing of my first uh of my own framework right is to basically say okay that exists now uh now let's do the same with the button here uh so what i want to do here is probably want to kind of arrange this so we could just say this is a row 12 and then here the button uh, has a class place x end just so that's on the right oh and the, uh, what I probably also want to do here on each of those so they could break or not right so I want to have a m uh, t2 on both of those right just so they don't convolute each other in the case we are hidden a breakpoint. Oh, we have no breakpoint here. Well, let's fix that too, I guess. Uh, so row 12, and then let's say row 66. Six. Oh, sorry, uh, MD row 66, six. right? So now we have this kind of behavior here where I say, okay, so they have some kind of uh, logic to each other and here I'm gonna say okay this is MT uh, also two right yeah and we have that here okay so let's assume that I kind of forgot to take care of the label for now uh, so and I also want to ignore that uh, I want to basically go and set up how my button is gonna look like so let's say that I want to have a, uh, well, how is my button gonna look like? Uh, so let's say I wanna have my button. I'm gonna go a little bit bootstrap here, I guess. Yeah, why not? Um, so I want to have a border around it. Uh, I want to have a BG, uh, not even that. Um, I wanna have a raised, right? Yeah, I wanna have raised one no how do i want this to look like uh okay so first of all i want to have this bigger right and then yeah i guess that's fine and then i also want to have a border of one and a border of transparent okay so it's super flat and then I need a little bit of padding on the, so and then I have a padding on the X axis of two and a padding on the Y axis of one. Yeah, I like that. And then I have a raised, nah, do I? Yeah, and then I have a hover, uh, raise one, Gray. No, the other way around, right? I have a raised one gray. Uh, oops. And then on hover. Uh, hover. I want to have a raise zero. Does that work? No, it doesn't work. Uh, let's do this like this for now. Okay, sure. 
Why not? Why not? Okay. All right. Now let's go to our compositions and say, hey, I'm gonna to wanna to call this button. I'm gonna call this button and take all of that. Well, not the place X to this, uh, I guess till here, right? I guess till here at extend and then this stuff. Uh, so here we know this needs that. And then we know that, oh, actually, I don't want this. I uh, know I don't want this at all. So what I'm going to do instead is something completely different. So let's first make sure that uh, uh, actually that this looks good. Uh, so now this time I have to make sure that it's in selection and uh, search for this and replace with this. Okay, that's better. And then I want to have a button main, right? Where I say, okay, so in my main version, I have a background main. I have a text uh, white. Yep. And then I have a hover. Uh, uh, the other way around, of course. Hover text main. Um, hover background white. And hover um, border uh, main. Yeah, does that make sense? I guess so. Uh, just for getting a little bit of dots here, for this to work. Uh, okay. All right. Now that said, what I expect here to do is to say, okay, so now I can say button, button, main, right? And boom, yep. Oh, I see, I wanna have that, it's a little bit different. This is, I don't like that white. Uh, so that should be background transparent then. What, Tra transparent, okay. Building. Okay. Yeah. That's how I want it to behave. Cool. Okay. I mean, the colors are a little bit aggressive, but basically uh, we have this going for us, right? So the only thing here, actually, now that I look at it, is that the. Uh, I want to have on those things here. Uh, I would like to have a margin right as well of one. Same for this guy here. Uh, and only on MD, I guess. Right? Does this work? Uh, this does not work. Okay, so we have not put that into our. Ah, oh, doesn't matter. What does not matter? I'm gonna say because I want to slowly get to an end here. Uh, I want to say on margin y one. Then it looks good on uh, both of those occasions, right? Why does it not do this? Do you need a padding? Yeah, need a padding one. Okay. What the? Ugh, because I'm stupid. Okay, <laughs> margin X, of course. Uh, of course, we need a margin X. Uh, 
Is that because it's in the, yeah, okay. See, so we have a little bit of a gap here. Ah, all right. Um, cool. Yeah, I like that behavior. Okay, so yeah, let's just assume, like I don't wanna again, like like uh, start actually designing something here. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the capabilities here. Um, so the last thing that you could consider, of course, is to say like, you can also build something like a classless. Uh, so for example, I could say, hey, you know, this stuff here uh, in my framework, uh, an H1, just has a particular look. It's not even a class, right? So just get that stuff here. Uh, and actually, the only thing I really want is this stuff. Uh, and say add extend, and then uh, this stuff here, and then get rid of anything. And then you know whenever the browser encounters an H1, that's just how it's going to look like, right? Which which used to be the way before. Uh, right, I mean, now the, the boldness is back in, but you get the idea. Um, and that's basically, um, um, it, right? Basically it, one, the main, the one, uh, P three. Okay. And here's our login form, right? Um, okay, that's basically um, everything. Let's just quickly look at the end of this. So I'm gonna stop executing that one. So once you're done with everything, right? What you do is you go back to the, uh, what's it called? Package JSON and run the build command, right? NPM run build, or in that case, I'm gonna just click on it and it's going to take a second so due to the am i right yes so this will be its own thing right because it's an add import of, of a css and the rest will be one um, so you can or cannot include this normalize uh, css which i would recommend to have something like that to clear uh, differences in in various browsers um, but if I now look at dist, so one of those CSS files that, oh, there are three of them. Interesting. Let's just see which one it is. It's, it's that guy, right? That's ours. Uh, and so here you can see, let's have a, actually find a look at that. So that's our framework for now, right? Where we say, Hey, um, we've got all of this content here. Oh, come on. See that? Those are all the rows, all the different variations that we can possibly create with all the different, you know, breakpoints that are what, in some kind of media query, I suppose. Uh, let's actually go up here and then search for MD. Yeah, so that's all in the media query of this okay so that makes it relatively lean right i mean still i mean there's so much i have to actually do here do you see how this is all generated right holy crap see that i mean probably generate like what yeah so 33 uh thousand lines of of uh css uh is what we just generated here uh in uh well you know, a little, little less than an hour, I hope. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so anyway, um, Hacktoberfest is coming up. Uh, we've got um, a lot of people that want like portfolio projects. Um, so having something like your own uh, CSS um, not only shows your, your skills in designing, but um, you know, like it's, it's very reusable. So if you have something that you can then basically like show off and say, hey, this is what I use. And then, you know, like, um, it's it's uh, something that shows your skill set. Um, you can look into the SAS uh, under the hood if you want to, and I actually encourage you to do so, right? So if you actually see, because there's no reason why you can't clone this, this is um, open source, 
right? So you can also clone the, the Gaudiamo CSS itself and then uh, see how that works, for example, right? So how does, how does, I don't know. I mean, let's look into uh, spacing, I guess, right? Doesn't matter, right? So here you can see it's basically a bunch of uh, mix-ins, right? And uh, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, and just so how this, yeah, this is here, the mix and map to class. So it looks a little bit complicated at the beginning, right? But um, if you take your time to, to uh, check it out, then you can basically see, well, okay, so how does certain things work, for example, and can I change that too? And the answer is, of course you can, right? The container here, for example, is just a blank container, right? So here, this just takes like, uh, here's base space, Oh, that's the margin it has from, got it, right? Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you can basically change how things work. Here, here the, the width, right, how that is generated and so on. You can go in here and kind of like change it to make it your own, right, if you want to. Uh, same with uh, where we are in spacing, right? Same with the grid system, like how does that work? You know, like just have, have a look and see what's going on here. See, this is our grid container prefix. So that would be row in our example, right? See how that works here. If you don't like that, that's called place X, change it. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, it has a license, right? So, so be sure to, um, uh, what is the license actually? Is there a license on this? No, it's an NPM, okay. No, it's probably in the, uh, in this package JSON itself. Wait, what is going on here? There, okay, yeah. So it's open source, you can do whatever you want, but of course you need to contribute, um, attribute, sorry. Um, so yes, um, lots of stuff you can do. I hope you have fun. I mean, start easy, you know, don't go wild with, with uh, mixins, but I mean, be, feel free to do so if, if you want to. And um, then I hope I s would be very interested if, if you were, you know, sharing your um, solutions, your designs, your frameworks, whatever, um, here in the comments. And uh, I hope you enjoyed and um, I see you soon.